Bess and I both got new hairdos going on today. You know what I was thinking, so Teres? I was thinking, Jenna had a baby, we got Yay. our hair done. That's like, <laughs> <laughs> these are like the two big things in our lives. Oh. Jenna's up here giving birth. I'm like, we're hey, just down I'm here just doing my hair. hair. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> Try something a little new. This didn't make it better. Love that you reminded us that God doesn't expect us to grow up and no longer need him. Right? Guys, here's Trez. Hi guys. Trez is here. Okay. How's it going? Trez. Look, hey, Trez. Sad. You know, Jenna's usually on this side because okay. I like this side better. Yeah. Okay, Kelsey. Hello, friend. Kels. You guys, so happy that you're here. Thank you so much. We're gonna try to hang and chat. We're yeah. gonna try this thing without Jenna. We're gonna see how this goes, guys. Yeah. Great. All right. Great, great, great. Let's look through some questions. Guys, do you have any <laughs> questions? We oh, love yeah. questions. We'd love to We're have here to chat. answer them. <laughs> answer some questions. Hang with you. New England Ooh. retreat. Yeah, you can always fill out the site mm -hmm. application form on the website, blessedisheet.net. And then there's a little uh, search bar on the top right, and you can just type in site application. We would love to come lots of places. We just can't come there without a venue that works and a team that works and a date that works. Mm -hmm. So it actually takes quite a bit of coordination and discernment in order for us to come anywhere. It's, it's honestly miraculous that we even have seven <laughs> this year. It's like an act of God so for exciting. us to find the right place and the right team and the right weekend and speakers are available. It's really like a move of God for us to bring a retreat anywhere. So please, please, please pray. And then we would love for you to do research and apply uh, with a site that works, that meets the specifications on that site application. Sound good? Lots of things. Yeah, lots, lots of things. I'm really excited. Next week I'm gonna be in Denver with Kelsey. I'm also mm -hmm. gonna be in St. Louis with Kelsey, and we're gonna be visiting the sites of our uh, May 29th and 30th St. Louis retreat. And we're gonna visit Denver and check out the parish where we're hosting our June 19th and 20th retreat. Please pray for That's us. Really and also, please come on retreat with us. Mm -hmm. There are six more this year all over the US. So come on down. Any message from Insinu Yezu? Yeah, I don't have anything off the top of my head. I did just pick it up again last night. Uh, the Lord was reminding me this weekend how much our priests need our prayers. Mm. So yeah. I feel like I, even though I'm a part of the Seven Sisters Apostolate, I actually um, pray two holy hours a week for two different priests. But I feel like my fervor is kind of lacking and I really needed to be reminded from the Lord how beautiful the priesthood is, what a gift these priests are, mm -hmm. and how much prayer and protection they actually need. So I started reading Encino again just to like revive that yeah. like fire and fervor to intercede for them. Yeah, highly recommend Encino Yezu. Mm -hmm. I do have something to say about it. Yeah. Last night I was reading in the very beginning. Do I have it here? I don't. Is it? We have it right in the stack. We got it. Guys, I need to read it. I still haven't read it yet. Oh, oh. sorry, Jesus. Oh my. It landed on a table, oh so it's not on the ground. It's fine. Okay, listen to this, my friends, slash Therese. This. Never knew what Encino Yezu was. Love this book. Talk about it all the time, all the ways. I'm so excited. And then I like opened it up last night and I read this Latin phrase, which mm. is John 13, 23. Now there was leaning on Jesus's bosom, one of his disciples whom Jesus loved. So the Latin of on Jesus's bosom, like reclining on his chest is in Sinu Yezu. Wow. I didn't know that's, that's where that was from. Yeah. Isn't that so silly? I didn't know that. Okay, so in Sinu Yezu that. means on Jesus's chest. Beth. Yeah. What was your biggest takeaway from the first Restore Retreat? Oh, well, I talked about it on the podcast last week. Yes. That episode is called, He's Digging a Well. <laughs> it just came out on Friday. And I shared a little bit about the Lord saying to me in prayer that he wanted to restore my heart. That's probably the, the overarching personal takeaway for me and something that I'm continuing to pray with in the days and weeks following. And, and I think, I have a sense that it will be happening 
incrementally over the next six retreats over the year. Okay. It's already happening, obviously. I find that when the Lord lets you in on something he's doing, he's like already doing it. It's not like, hang on, I'm going to restore your heart next year. He's like, this is what's mm -hmm. happening right now. I'm restoring your heart. It's so cool, you guys. I'm still surprised that the Lord doesn't treat me like an employee. Mm -hmm. Like I'm not there to run the retreat mm -hmm. primarily. I'm there, first of all, as a daughter. I'm there because the Lord wants to communicate something to my heart and he wants to like give me grace and help me. The ministry and like the cooperation with him, all of that is almost like residual. It's like a bonus, you know? Um, he's just always only ever after my heart. Yeah, retreat was great. What was your biggest takeaway, Therese? I mean, I was saying in like our little small group we had before. Yeah, yeah. Like I hadn't been on retreat, any sort of retreat in years. Wow. Yeah. Being able to just enter into that yeah. was really special because I realized that I just need so much more quiet time wow. in my life. Because mm -hmm. everything's just, everything's so busy and loud. Totally. You know? Yeah. Like entering into that retreat was just a huge reminder that I just need more quiet time with the Lord. Because mm -hmm. it's hard during the week and the day and yeah. everything's so crazy. So, Well, and yeah. you're, you're a student and you work. Mm-hmm. Therese is doing yeah. the deal, you guys. She's <laughs> doing all the things all the time. Lots of things. Yeah. I mean, that's a really beautiful takeaway. Tell yeah. me, I'm curious what small group this was. Like your small group on retreat? Or no, it was like the little tables we did at the Come retreat um, dinner beforehand. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Small group. No, yeah. so we yeah. do it. We host a volunteer dinner uh, the night before the retreat. And that's when the Lord spoke mm -hmm. to my heart too about restoring it. Mm -hmm. I know Beth and I both got new hair dudes going on today. Yeah. You know what I was thinking, so Tress? I was thinking, Jenna had a baby. We got Yay. our hair done. That's like, <laughs> <laughs> these are like the two big things in our lives. <sighs> Jenna's up here giving birth. Yeah. I'm like, we're hey, just down I'm here just doing my hair. hair. Yeah. It's great. <laughs> How can I witness or help encourage a non-believer who's going through a depressive time mm. and very concerned and want to use this as an opportunity to love and help? That's I would hard. really pray and ask the Holy Spirit what what the the next right move is in that relationship. A time like that can be a really beautiful opportunity and invitation to share your faith and like give hope because the gospel is inherently hopeful. Jesus is our hope. But sometimes it's there's like a real block, like a, a spiritual deafness mm -hmm. when you're in that kind of a season. And so the way to communicate hope is just to be with them, to mm -hmm. take a walk with them, to listen, to, to intercede for them when you're mm -hmm. not together. Yeah. Um, so I would really, I would really ask the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. to direct you. Mm -hmm. I, I wonder actually, even if I, as I described those, those two um, possible ways that you could respond, if one of them like already felt more right, mm -hmm. pay attention to, um, the Holy Spirit who lives on the inside of you as you're discerning those things. And, and he'll direct you. Also, I would really pray and ask St. Dymphna to intercede. Oh, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah the, the saints are so powerful and mm -hmm. they like live eternally mm -hmm. to help us. They want to be used. They want to be, you know, your friend already has like a whole team of saints interceding mm -hmm. and his, his or her guardian angel interceding. So there are already saints and angels surrounding both of you. So I would start asking specifically for certain saints and angels uh, to intercede. And just be like a support system mm -hmm. for them. You know, sometimes that can be just one of the best things. Yeah. That they know that you're there. So. Yeah. Available. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 That's so good, Tress, because sometimes you don't want to talk about it, you know, but right. it like means so much to just get a text, you know? Yeah. My son argues to pray directly to God. Praying to mm. Mary and saints isn't in the Bible. I need advice how to discuss this with them. Yeah. That's a good I question. I would always start with what you have in common, right? So mm -hmm. I would, we absolutely should pray to God directly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, so start with your common ground. Okay. Yeah, so I would start with common ground and then I would do some research. I would, I would pray and study and find those scriptures that the church uses to support the intercession of, of saints. And I think you can share with him simple analogies, like everyday analogies, like mm -hmm. we keep pictures up around the house of people that we love uh, who have died. 
And that's mm-hmm. because we want to remember how much we love them and how much they love us. And it's the same with the saints. That's why we have pictures or statues of saints to remember their life, to remember their example, to be inspired Mm -hmm. by them. Remember that they're not dead, they're alive Mm -hmm. in heaven. You could even talk about the process of being canonized, how there are miracles approved through their intercession. I think in general, joy (laughs) and excitement kind of disarms people in an argument. Mm -hmm. So I love the saints. I don't feel like I have to pray to the saints. I believe I am talking to Jesus in prayer, but I'm asking this other person to talk with me to Jesus, basically. Mm -hmm. The Bible says even like where two or three are gathered, Mm -hmm. there I am. So I would love to have a saint who's in heaven with no sin, no obstacle Mm -hmm. in their relationship with the Lord. They've got a direct line. They're eternally in the presence of the face of God. Mm -hmm. I want that person to be praying for me. Because that's where we want to be someday. Uh, you know? Yes. So we need all the help we can get. Amen. You know? Yeah. Beth, you mm. mentioned a few weeks ago that you were reading He and I. What are your takeaways from that and how does it compare Ooh, to Ooh, I'm loving He and I, which is a very similar format. It's Jesus speaking to the, the soul, the heart of a lay woman mm. in France in the ooh, early 1900s, I think. And I'm feeling very affirmed by how gently he speaks to her, how regularly, and even in the beginning years, just in like short phrases. That's been very affirming of my own experience of hearing the voice of God. I was telling Nell on retreat, at one point she caught me, I had gone outside like of the courtyard Mm -hmm. because the sun was setting and it was gorgeous. Mm. I could just like peek it over the, uh, over the, you know, hall where we work. So I stepped out of the courtyard Mm -hmm. because Jesus had said to um, Gabrielle in he and I, Mm -hmm. not enough of my children look at the sunset. It is, he said, it is my love for them. So I'm like trying so hard to go outside and look at the sunset and like receive it as, um, as a gift, as like a sign of God's love for me. Yeah. So that's like one little specific thing that I've taken. But in general, that's beautiful. sort of the tone has been really affirming for me. Wow. Yeah. That's beautiful. You should read it, friend. I know. I really want to so read good. it. It's so good. You guys always have the best book I recommendations. Know, yeah. I can't keep up with all of them. I just got to start. <laughs> just takes one. Yeah, exactly. Advice for someone longing to be a missionary but struggling with having to put off further studies for a future career. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I just think that God doesn't always do things on our natural or like reasonable timelines. Mm -hmm. So it would not surprise me if the Lord was giving you an opportunity and calling you at an inopportune time. Mm -hmm. I think oftentimes the Lord calls us at inopportune times. I do think that the Lord also is patient and might give you a vision for something, but say not yet. So Mm -hmm. I think it's something to weigh in prayer and to weigh alongside the counsel of very godly, trusted Mm -hmm. spiritual advisors. That Mm -hmm. would include like your parents Mm -hmm. or professors, uh, a trusted priest. Yeah, a good friend who's like rooted Mm -hmm. um, in their relationship with the Lord, but Mm -hmm. not to just kind of put it out there in the wind for anybody to comment on. So I think it's a very personal discernment. The Lord does unique things with us, right? Mm -hmm. He's not always doing or saying the same thing from one soul to the next. So I think it sounds beautiful. Whatever Mm -hmm. it is, whenever it happens, it sounds like the Lord is like birthing something in your Mm -hmm. heart, you know? planting yeah. it so he'll bring it to fruition yeah, yeah when it's time it's hard to like let go of the the timeline <sighs> amen yeah i hear you i get that yeah the baby i'm nannying keeps looking at my hi. phone saying hi oh hi. cute hi babe guys i'm just getting used to this whole thing yeah we're so. we're finding our new <laughs> rhythm thanks for hanging with us you guys you're so holy We love this. You're so holy. How's everyone's Lent? How's Lent going so far, guys? It just started. What? That's a really good question. Tris, where do you think Lent's going? Can I ask that? It's very personal. I won't answer that if you ask me, so I would understand. Yeah. (laughs) I would understand if you didn't answer that. No, it's great. I would love to share. Something that I've just like 
thought about since the new year is that I really don't have a lot of structure and routine in my life. Okay. Yeah. So I've always focused during like past Lenten seasons to what can I give up? That was always the big thing. But really when I was praying about it this time around, it really came down to what do I need to add to like get more structure in my Love life. That. Mm -hmm. Whether it's financially, prayer wise, I just really needed to do things that gave me more structure and more routine. So I decided every day to add a rosary or a chapel to divine mercy. Love that. Yeah, I love the chapel to divine mercy. So um, really wanted to start doing that daily because I just need a better, better routine of prayer. So. How's it going? Are you enjoying it? Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, yeah, cool. it's just very special. You know? I think it's a beautiful time to pray it during Lent, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, it's going well so far. I didn't want to set like too high of a goal because yeah. then if I, you know, didn't make it, that would be a That would sad. be, first of all, that would be okay if yeah. you didn't reach your Lenten mm -hmm. goal or keep your Lenten promise perfectly. That would be okay. Mm -hmm. You guys, I'm just going to, for a second, I'm going to get on my yeah. Lenten soapbox. Let's I go. feel like I should have done this as a Teachable Tuesday last week. And I actually didn't get on Instagram on Ash Wednesday. I just thought mm. I would like make that a part of my fast. And it's not like I like planned to do that and obviously give up social media. Hello, Instagram. But I was just like, I just need a little space today. But then as the day went on, I was getting more and more fired up and I wanted to post something on Instagram <laughs> because I feel so strongly about Lent. I mm -hmm. think Lent is a season that could create some of the deepest intimacy mm -hmm. and the most life change imaginable. There is mm -hmm. so much grace available to be united to Jesus in his suffering, in the desert, in his fasting and praying. And that doesn't often look the way that we think it will look. My big soapbox is, did you ask Jesus what he wants you to do for Lent. Mm -hmm. So last week I mm -hmm. talked to yep. five different people, five <laughs> different friends separately, and they told me what they planned to do for Lent, all really good plans, mm -hmm. all like trying to seek virtue mm -hmm. and like more discipline. Mm -hmm. They're like seeing these problems in their life and they're like, I want to grow or I want to get back on track. Mm -hmm. And then they asked Jesus what he wanted them to do. And you know what, guys? It was totally different. Mm -hmm. It was like very yeah. counterintuitive to what they thought they needed to do. I will just never get off this train mm -hmm. that you should ask the Lord what he wants you to do for Lent because the That's graces great. that we need, he, he mm -hmm. knows better than we do. Yeah. And sometimes those like things that we're worried about that we are struggling with in sin or, you know, whatever. We think we've got to attack them head on. Mm -hmm. We like want to like go into battle mode and like mm -hmm. root these sins out of our life. But yeah. the sin, the behavior is actually symptomatic of a deeper sickness, something going on with our identity in our yeah. soul with like broken relationships or mm -hmm. like agreements we've made with you know, like evil spirits, honestly, like bitterness or yeah. anger or um, hopelessness. And the Lord sees that and he wants to love us in those mm -hmm. places. He wants to be gentle to us in those places. He doesn't mm -hmm. want us to kill ourselves fasting and praying to get over something. I am in no way saying we shouldn't fast or pray. <laughs> That's not what I'm saying at all. But I do think my experience of Lent in the past seven years has been that every time I go to the Lord with what I think I should do, he gives me something different that seems easier, mm -hmm. but actually lived mm -hmm. is much harder because mm -hmm. it's more about relationship and trust and healing mm -hmm. than it is about performance. There we go. <laughs> Thank you. Take a bow. It's the end of my soapbox. <laughs> And it's we don't fabulous. have to talk about it ever again. I'm yeah. not promising that I will never talk about it again, but I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna great. submit that to you. you. Did great. Therese, yeah. feel free. Yeah. Well, I was just thinking when you were saying that, sometimes even if the Lord gives you a simple, what seems like a simple Lenten yes. resolution, sometimes the simple things are actually the hardest things to do. 
you know? Yes. That's just what I was thinking. You guys, I wish I had talked to these five friends before today so I could tell you the things mm. that Jesus told them to do mm. because they're like bananas. They're so kind. They're so gentle. Mm. They're so about like nurturing that, mm -hmm. that person's soul and yeah. not at all about punishing or reforming. Do you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Yeah. Lots of you are saying it's, it, we're struggling to be yeah, consistent. Totally. Yeah. And I think that's it's natural. I, th yeah. I think that's a natural thing when you're trying to make a change. Mm -hmm. Consistency is a challenge. But sometimes I think that can be an indication mm -hmm. that you're trying to do it on your own. Mm, you're not doing yeah. it with the Lord. You yeah. might be doing it for the Lord, but you're not doing it with him. Yeah. So there's not a lot of grace to help you yeah. if you're doing it for the Lord. He would much prefer to do yeah. your Lenten promise or fast with you. Yeah, that's a beautiful way to look at it. Mm -hmm. Do it with him. Yeah, even though you're doing it for him too. Oh, totally. But, you know. But the thing is, we can't even do it on our own. Yeah. We Even the things he asks us mm -hmm. to do, we can't do on our own. I'm having yeah. another Lent like that where I'm like, how am I supposed to do that? Mm -hmm. I can't do that. He's like, no, you can't. I'll do it. I'm like, yeah. how cool. is this even Lent? <laughs> Lord, there's a lot of wrestling going on in my Lent. But yeah. it's good. Yeah. Yeah. I'm really struggling to be consistent. I really mm -hmm. want to have a deep relationship with the Lord. But yeah. as the saying goes, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would talk to Jesus about that. Mm -hmm. Lord, I really want to do this. Mm -hmm. I'm trying, but I feel like I'm failing. Mm -hmm. Can you help? What do you think, Lord? And, and let him speak into that. Mm -hmm. you're, remember, you're not, um, you're not God's employee. Mm -hmm. You know, he's not gonna sit down with you on Easter and give you a performance review. Yeah, so just talk to him. It's hard to form new habits, new routines. Aaron said, what do you do when you aren't hearing or feeling the Lord mm -hmm. in prayer? Aaron, do you know what I do? I just keep going. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was just telling the Lord last night, my prayer has been so different since my eight day. I'm mm -hmm. not really hearing him and I'm not really feeling him the way I used to. Mm. Um, and you know, when I look back cumulatively over the past however many weeks, the Lord is obviously very present and active, but it feels different. And so I'm kind of out of my comfort zone. I prefer my prayer mm -hmm. to look and feel a different way. And that's not where we are right now. So I would say, just tell Jesus that. You know, yeah. I'm not really feeling you. I'm not really, um, I'm not really hearing from you. Mm -hmm. I'm tempted to be discouraged, but I know that you're here, God. But yeah. you know, give me some clarity. It's okay to ask for clarity. Yeah. And I think we were talking last week too. Just go to the Word. Go to the Bible. Trust. You know? Yes. <laughs> if you're not yeah. hearing from God, go yeah. read His Word because mm -hmm. He is speaking there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We did a whole Teachable Tuesday on it last week. You know, totally. it's on YouTube. If you, you want to go find watch it. it. There. Yeah. You can find it. Yep. Lent has become one of my favorite seasons, not by choice. <laughs> I feel the same way. I, I look that. forward to Lent now because it's a time where the Lord, um, re it's a real time of growth for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, difficulty being consistent. Yeah. You guys, I love that you're sharing your Lenten promises. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. I know I trust God, but there's so much turmoil around me. I sometimes forget that I do trust in Him. Yeah. Yeah. You know, feelings can be misleading. I was sharing that with my spiritual director last week that, um, you know, I do believe this in like the deepest part of me. Mm -hmm. I believe that God is faithful and trustworthy, but still there are like worries and concerns yeah. kind of floating around. And definitely yeah. the enemy wants to capitalize on that. He wants mm -hmm. to come in and plant suggestions and whisper yeah. lies. So I believe that you do deeply trust God. Mm -hmm. Um, but when those doubts come, I think it's mm -hmm. as simple, okay. AKA mm -hmm. hard <laughs> yeah. as, um, training ourselves to just turn to him and tell him about those things. I always like to ask like, Hey Lord, why am I having this? Like where, where is this coming from? Yeah. Especially if anxiety comes up and you know, life just gets crazy, you know? So I'm just like, okay, Lord, why am I feeling this way? Mm -hmm. And typically he tells me why I'm feeling that way, wow. whether it's pretty immediate or within time. And that usually just gives me a lot of consolation, you know? 
That's so good. Yeah. Thanks for sharing that. Yeah. What do you do when bad things keep happening in life for years? How do you have faith, especially mm -hmm. after so much loss? Suze, I'm so sorry. Yeah. That we'll pray that's for been your experience. Yeah. yeah. I do think the Lord is very close in suffering, mm -hmm. and that also seems counterintuitive. Uh, but I believe He wants to be even closer than he is to you mm -hmm. right now. He he wants to hear all about it. And and that's mm -hmm. like the ugly stuff too, you mm -hmm. know, like the 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 doubt that you have, the anger that you have, mm -hmm. the fears that you have, um, mm -hmm. the anxiety. Tell him everything. He mm -hmm. he can handle that. And he is um he's not going anywhere. Mm -hmm. You know, your feelings about your suffering and and like your experience, trauma, those things don't mm -hmm. scare him and they don't, um, he's not turned off by them. He wants mm -hmm. very much to come in and, and to be a comfort and to redeem and restore those sufferings, truly. Mm -hmm. um, it's, suffering is a mystery and the catechism mm -hmm. speaks beautifully about suffering. I would really recommend uh, looking to the catechism. So that's like a compilation of all the things we, the church holds as truth, our teachings. Mm -hmm. I would, I would read some of that about suffering. Um, I, I would read, uh, Isaiah 53 about mm -hmm. Jesus, the suffering servant, not mm -hmm. to say Jesus suffered. Um, and that negates your suffering. It's the opposite. It's that mm -hmm. Jesus is so familiar with the pain of suffering and loss, uh, mm -hmm. that, he really is uniquely suited yeah. to, to speak to you and, and to understand. Um, for sure. But yeah, I, I will pray for you. I'm yeah. really grateful that you're here. Yeah. And that obviously you're here means that you desire faith mm -hmm. and that you really do have faith already, even if it feels mm -hmm. wobbly or um, yeah. you might feel like it's lacking. The fact that you're here says that, that yeah. you do. But yeah, there's definitely like a grief period and sometimes it's longer than others and the Lord really wants to be there with you through that and it's like a very tender time mm. when you're going through stuff like that. Yeah. But allow yourself to grieve, loss, trauma, stuff like that, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. 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 And you're not alone. Yeah. You don't have to do it alone. Yeah. And sometimes like opening up to a friend too. I find is really helpful mm -hmm. just like to have someone to share that with because it's easy to like keep it all in totally you know yeah um I've just always found that sharing it with you know people I trust or you know spiritual advisors I know? think a trusted yeah. friend like walking with people yeah. through hard things and saying like hey here's my mm -hmm. story First of all, yeah. just to share your story with someone is so powerful mm -hmm. and it's healing I think in and of itself just to mm -hmm. be received um, I do think, however, we can be tempted to sit too much mm -hmm. in the hard and bad things that have happened. Yeah. And so there is kind of an act of will to intentionally look for um, God's blessing, places that you can thank him, um, beautiful things in your life. Like there is an act of will that has to happen to begin mm -hmm. to give thanks even when it yeah. hurts to like... Find God's presence even when you feel alone rather than kind of like the Israelites. They really mm -hmm. just like complained against yeah. God. They weren't, um, even though God was with them, they weren't looking mm -hmm. for him. The devil tempts us with lies mm -hmm. that are hidden in some bits of truth. Isn't mm -hmm. that the truth? He's tricky. Like the second temptation <laughs> of Jesus in the desert, Satan used scripture in the temptation. He did. Mm -hmm. He even twisted mm -hmm. God's word. He's so sneaky. Yeah. He's so sneaky. Yeah. That problem I was talking about this weekend, when I was sharing it with a friend, when I got out of my head and I shared it with a friend, mm -hmm. all of a sudden I could see so clearly yeah. the enemy is mm -hmm. totally twisting this thing. And really, when he finds that certain things don't work anymore, yeah. when we like level up in our spirituality, when we grow and mature in faith, he's yeah. got to find a new tactic. Yeah. So he's gonna, his lies are going to, they're always going to yeah. be lies but they might become like more sophisticated, like hiding mm -hmm. bits of truth, you know? That's why it's good to go to a friend because sometimes vocalizing oh, yeah. how you're feeling, other people can speak into that in ways that you might not see just like in your own head. 
It's hard to get perspective it when is. you're like mm -hmm. just in your head. Right. Because on, you only have your perspective. Mm -hmm. So when things are desolate, we have to look more intentionally for beauty and consolation. Mm -hmm. But it's more valuable when we do find it. Amen. That mm -hmm. is a good word. That's it's awesome. Brilliant. Oh, so glad that you're here, Colleen. Can't wait to see you in DC. We got um, some new faces here today. That's yeah, great. welcome, guys. Yeah. Oh, father of lies, dealing half truths. <laughs> totally. For sure. Thanks for um, sharing your great, heart guys. and questions. We'll be yeah. here on Tuesdays for the next yeah. couple of weeks. Yeah. Therese will be in the hot seat yeah. with me. Yeah, just grateful that you're part of the Blessed She community. You know, we're yeah. not sitting here with yeah. all the answers, you know, yeah. we're just your sisters doing this with you. Yeah. Growing and learning and praying right alongside you. So thanks yeah. for being community to us too. Oh, hey, can we yeah. just close with prayer? I would yeah. love to pray together. Yeah. Can I behold that? Oh yeah. Let's pray, pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen, Lord. We love you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for the gift of this community. Mm -hmm. Thank you for the gift of every single soul watching. Thank you that you desired them. You created them out of love and with a purpose, God. I pray that they would feel that with certainty in their bodies, down to their bones, in their souls, God, that they're chosen, that they're loved, that they are wanted. Mm -hmm. yeah. I pray that um, that would be the deepest reality in their life is that they're loved, that they are your daughters, God. Lord, we um, offer to you all of our intentions, all the people that we love, all the worries or concerns that we have. I, I um, want to lift up anybody who's waiting for a decision, mm -hmm. who uh, is going to a doctor's appointment, um, anything that's kind of like hanging out there. Jesus, we hold that thing out to you. Thank you that we're not alone, that you're right here with us, that you'll go with us to that appointment or to that class. We're into that conversation. Lord, we ask for a deeper healing of our souls and our hearts. Pray for your consolation for each and every woman here. Thank you for your perfect love, Lord. And God, once again, we give you everyone and everything we care about. We, we turn it over to you, Jesus. We trust in you. Take care of everything, Lord. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Oh my gosh, good timing. Look, we're out of time. All, All right. right. Well, thanks for hanging. See thanks, you. Beth. See you next. Therese, thanks this for coming. Great. Good times. <laughs> guys, love All you. Right. See ya. Bye, guys. Bye. Oh, top right. <laughs>